Good morning, everybody. Painblade back here again from Server 1, representing IAC and Tribes Lab. Uh, today, guys, we're going to be focusing on the actual tribes themselves. Now, if you know anything about me as a player, you know how much I despise the actual concept that is tribes. Funny enough, the game is called Naruto X Baruto Ninja Tribes, but I think it should be called Naruto X Baruto Ninja Co-op because everyone now pretty much is using co-op, and for good reason. But that's not to say the tribes are useless. Now, I will put my disclaimer on here. I'm going to be giving you my personal tier list of tribes, ones that you should be focusing on, especially now that they've buffed tribes. Now, if you haven't been following, tribes have been buffed in terms of their percentages, mostly for damage and some percentages for the effects, okay? So it has made them a little more viable, but still not enough to make them better or even as useful as co-op. Now, that disclaimer is for PvP purposes. For PvE, tribes are fantastic. Now, that's what we're going to be talking about more than anything. First and foremost, I just want to point out uh, Abyss is done. I'm so excited to actually finish. So for a lot of you that have been asking, what do you um, what do you get at the end of the Abyss? Well, you get two extra shards. So Bandai has been extremely generous this, this anniversary. They've given us a free one-star Jiraiya if you have 1,000 coins, which you should uh, get them from the Shinobi Exchange Shop. Uh, if you actually finish um, the Abyss before, you used to drop about 26 to 28 fragments. Now they're dropping 35. So even at the one star level, guys, if you can even get to stage 28 or B28 and get to 30, and even if you don't beat 30, you're still going to get 33 fragments a day, which you can actually almost five star or five star a one star Jiraiya. So you're pretty much getting a five star for free if you can get to this point. For new players, of course, a little harder, but for veterans, this is something you want to strive for. Nonetheless, I digress. Let's go back into what we're here for. Let's talk about tribes. So if you don't know anything about the update, and you have, if you've been reading up on the updates, you know that they've buffed tribes in terms of um, the amount of damage tribes do. The status effects, as I mentioned, the percentages have gone up. And they've actually given us a nifty little challenge, um, which is right here, the tribe special leveling support, which is extremely easy, guys. So do yourselves a favor. Even if you don't use tribes like I do, go ahead and do these challenges and get them done. The reason why you want to do these is because they give a ton of good rewards. Plus, they're super easy to do, and you can get an Awakening Orb out of this and some Ryo. So the, the, the original challenges you see here that are missing are ones where you enhance your tribes, and all you need to do that is get some NWT coins like these, which you get from NWT. So if you're level 47, I believe, you unlock that, and you can start participating. So get those, uh, and then start leveling some of those tribes up, and, uh, and then you'll eventually get into this. And then make sure that if you don't have auto NW3 entry, you enter yourself into the tournament every day. Don't forget to do that so you can get this done. You have 41 days. I mean, plenty of time to get this done. So there's no excuse not to finish it, even for brand new players. Okay, so let's go into the actual tribes. So the first and foremost, I just want to point out, there's a method to how to use tribes. And there should always be a process. So first and foremost, remember that tribes requires you to have the same two or three people in the same cell in order for the tribes to activate. If you separate those people in different cells, you cannot combine them to be a tribe. It becomes a co-op, which is fine if that's your aim. But if you want to actually use a tribe, these characters must exist on the same cell. So pretty basic stuff. I just want to cover that, okay? Now, two-man tribes are never as good as three-man tribes. Remember that, okay? So even if you like two of your favorite characters together doing a tribe, Remember, it's not as good. And the reason why it's not as good, and this is something they should have fixed, is when you use a two-man tribe, it messes up your rotation. So, let's say you have Kakashi and Guy in Force, and you're about to do a tribe in Spirit, okay? What it does is if you activate the tribe, is it puts them from their Force, right? It, it replaces the two Spirit characters, it puts the Force characters in, which is Kakashi and Guy, and you have one Spirit character still in the third cell. So your next turn, you're now messing up your rotation because now you have one spirit and two energy for the next one, right? So remember that if you're going to use a two-man tribe, you're going to mess up your rotation in PvP. PvE, it doesn't matter because it's completely random. So that's where this, this kind of thrives, right? So let's go through the two-man tribes and see which ones are worth it, okay? Now, in my opinion, the two best ones for, well, maybe, let's say we have three best ones, are going to be the following, okay? Kakashi and Guy are still one of the best tribes in the game because of two things. Number one, both characters are actually really good. So tribes, is, as if you, as if as if you've been following me, you will know that I always say that tribes always has a weak link as characters. Two man tribes, not so much. Most of the characters are actually really decent and can be used together. Three man three man tribes are where you find the weakest link. But for the two man tribes, 
Kakashi and Guy are phenomenal characters on their own. As you can see here, they've buffed up the percentages of damage 74.9%. I believe before it used to be like 48%, so they've doubled the damage. And they've also doubled the percentage rates. So the damage boost increase rate that you get is 33.84%, and so is the damage reduction rate at level 10. Okay, And that's for all users on the same three-man cell for the rest of the battle. So whatever cell they're in is going to benefit from this. Now, it's not as good as having all allies, but this is one of the only two-man tribe AoEs out there um, that actually does decent damage and actually is two really good characters. The other one is going to be this Heavy and Sarada one. So as you can see here, it activates 60% chance to burn, right? And deals 30% damage to tactical shinobis. Now, this one here is good for anytime you're fighting uh, T-Tactic, PVE and it's decent because burn does an actual a good amount of damage when you level this up this is actually a really low level of mine but if you if you get this up high enough it actually does decent damage and but this one's the better of the two right so it actually lowers enemies um, defense by 75.84 percent for the rest of the battle and does a hundred percent chance to heavy wound which is fantastic in PV in PVE so between the two of them, you want to go with this one. Now, the problem with this one is you know how much I don't like Papa Sasuke, but it is the better of the two tribes. So the two best tribes for two men is going to be this one here, this one over here, okay? This one isn't bad. Um, it boosts all allies, but no, actually, no, you know what? That one sucks. Never mind. I take that back. That one is horrible. Um, just let me see which is the other good one. Not very good. This one actually isn't bad because it heals, um, but still not very good. This one isn't bad, but still not the best one. I'm just trying to find you guys the best one here. Let's see one of the new ones. Only damage reduction rate. Nope, not very good. This is actually really good. So here is one. So this is probably the next best one. So Guy Kakashi, uh, Papa Sasuke Sarada, and then uh, Gods and Angel Judgment with Conan and Pain lowers enemies' damage reduction rate by 32%, which is massive. Deals 100% damage plus 240% damage to the opponent. That's insane amount of damage. Uh, boosts all allies' damage increase rate by 17% for the rest of the battle. So that is really good, guys. That's, so this is the other one that I would recommend. Uh, if you're doing a single target one, especially for two-man tribe, and then... This is the other one that's really good as well too. Uh, so this is the new one. Um, so you can see the damage pretty insane. It does. It, it is a single target, but it deals fifty percent extra damage to defense shinobi, so tanks, and that's they're usually really hard to kill in PVE. And it boosts all all damage increase rate by seventeen percent and critical rate by eighteen percent for the rest of the battle. So that's actually not bad. Okay. So those are the three. Let's say the the four best two man tribes. Okay. So it's Kakashi and Guy. Um, it's Sarada and Papa Sasuke. Uh, it's Pain and Conan, and it's uh, Naruto and Jiraiya, the, specifically the story entrusted by his mentor one, okay? So those are probably the best ones to go with. That's two-man tribes, okay? Now, three-man tribes are a little more difficult. So three-man tribes, uh, there's quite a bit to choose from. So the best one, hands down, you'll never, you're never going to beat this tribe, is going to be the summoning three-way deadlock with the legendary summoning. The reason why this tribe is so good, uh, just keep in, note, keep in mind that the the legendary, sorry, the three man tribes do not give as much damage percentage, so they're not as strong percentage wise for damage, but they do a lot more, right? They give a lot more buffs and usually debuffs. Now, the reason why this one is so incredible is because it damages all active allies with a 60% chance to burn them with quite a bit of burn, as you can see there, 7,200, and it's for four turns, but it also has a chance to paralyze them 30% chance to paralyze. Plus recovers all the allies' HP by 37.5% of own attack and boosts damage reduction rate by 375 attack for two turns. That is insane. So you're looking at two buffs and two debuffs. And they're really good debuffs. So you're probably talking about the best one. So if you're going to focus on any, any tribes, this is the one you want to go with. Now, of course, Tsunade isn't the greatest when it comes down to a character, but for PvE, she shines. She's hands down the best healer probably in the game next to Blossom, but also the biggest chakra giver. She can give up to like 7,000 chakra per character. So this is the best tribe. You're not going to get any better than this. Now the next one up, the next one in line would be the Wind, Lightning, and Cherry Blossom killing Roar one. 
Of course, a little harder to get because of the two URs, but and Papa Sasuke is not the greatest. But honestly, Papa Sasuke actually does really well in PVE because of his burn and his heavy wound. And this is actually a really, really good tribe. It boosts damage increase rate by 28.7% of the same three-man cell, so essentially them. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna be doing more attack, more more damage. They're gonna recover all allies HP by 15% of own attack and boost the defense by 81.26% for the rest of the battle. So you're gonna be taking a lot less damage by having this one done, and it, it's one of the coolest animations. It probably is one of the best tribes out there. So that would be the second best tribe. Third one would be the Sand Siblings. Now this one deals uh, damage to all active uh, all active enemies. So it's an AOE just like the other two. Um, and it has a percent uh, has a chance to to poison them for ten turns, so not burn but poison. Very similar status effect, and does does it take every time? And a hundred percent chance to heavy wound all enemies, um, and for five turns. Now that's all enemies, guys. That's huge. That's not just the, the active enemies, right? So and boost all allies guard rate by twenty percent for the rest of the battle. So if you're using someone like Gara, and and you're looking to be a little more tanky, this is actually a phenomenal tribe to use as well too. Now. Tamari isn't the greatest, neither is Kankuro, but Gara is fantastic. So this would probably be the best third tribe. Now, if we keep going down the list, the Frenzied Guardian is great. Uh, the characters themselves, not so much, but this is actually one of the tribes that I, I loved in the beginning because it recovers all allies' HP, it boosts guard rate, and it also increases chakra for every single character on, on in your party, so all allies. So definitely one of the better tribes out there. The problem is Sugetsu, Jugo, and Karin aren't the greatest characters, so I don't like to use them personally. Um, let's get into some single tribes. Now, single damage tribes. Uh, Team 7 Reborn, for sure, one of the best ones here. Characters are actually decent uh, and easy to get, so it does a ton of damage. Single target, 100% chance to burn, um, and it does it for 4 turns. 100% chance to heavy wound all enemies, again, that's all enemies for 5 turns. And boost attack by 45% for users of the same three-man cell. So these guys will get an insane amount of damage boost on them. So it's, And it's actually a hard-hitting one. So this is actually probably one of the best single-target ones. Now, the other three, or the other two, I should say, that are really good um, is going to be this one here, Plot Converging in Darkness. Same type of scenario where it hits a ton of damage, but this one actually recovers all allies' HP by 24.75%. Lowers all enemies' attack by 33.75% for two turns, so you can actually help a lot in PvE. Um, and boost damage increase rate by 24.53 for the three-man cell. So Kabuto, Orochimaru, and Sasuke Heavy will be doing a ton of damage. Now keep in mind, guys, these characters can also be interchanged between Sasuke Heavy SR and UR, right? So you can actually go back and forth between them. Um, the other single-man tribe that is, that's amazing is actually the Commander of the Heavy, which is, see that I just bypass it, this one right here, there we go. So same scenario, single target, but this one actually boosts all allies' attack by 28.13% for the rest of the battle, which is incredible. Boosts guard rate by 56.25% and guard damage rate reduction by 39.38% for users in the three-man cell. So these three become so freaking hard-hitting and tanky. So this is probably my favorite single target tribe. Um, also, not, not only for looks, but the three characters together are actually pretty decent together, especially with Sasuke Kirin in there. Any lineup looks good. So those are my favorite three-man tribes um, with the Sanin, uh, the uh, Killing Aurora with Adult Team 7, and the Sand tribe as being the best three AoE tribes. And then the single target ones, we're looking at Commander of Heavy, we're looking at the, um, the plotting convergence of darkness and Team Seven Reborn are probably the three my, three of my favorite ones. Uh, now, a lot of people have been asking, what's up with these Akatsuki ones? Are they worth it? Are they good? So look, they're good, but you have to remember it does take a whole turn away from you to give these buffs, and it doesn't do any damage. So these these. This, this is a crazy amount of buffs though like th let's take a look at all three of them so this one boosts all allies damage increase rate by 55 percent for the rest of the battle boosts all allies damage reduction rate by 38 percent for the rest of the battle boosts all allies status effects suppression rate by five percent so these percentages are ridiculous and they are lasting throughout the whole battle the catch is you need to use three of these akatsuki members with pain or conan and the issue here is the Akatsuki members aren't that good, right? So you're forced to kind of use a shit team 
in order to get a good result for percentages. Now remember, guys, buffs and debuffs do not scrape over battle to battle in PvE, right? So you will lose those buffs. So if you're going to use these characters to get these buffs, which are probably some of the best buffs in the game, um, it's fine, but make sure the other six characters are very strong characters that won't die and actually can take advantage of these buffs. So my recommendation is for these, these Akatsuki guys, um, the best ones you're looking at is probably... Sasori and Dedera, who give uh, critical rate 55% for the rest of the battle, critical damage increase 55% for the rest of the battle, and boost all status effects rate by 5%. That means they're going to be hitting insane amount of damage. You know, I'm talking about insane. And at the same time, you're going to be taking advantage of the, um, uh, the, the status effect rate by 5%. So you're going to be stunning... Uh, doing poison and burns a lot more off or shadow stitches, right? That's the best one out of all of them. And the characters themselves are probably the better of the characters. The next one in line would probably be this one here. If you're fighting opponents who, uh, like in Abyss, for example, there's like a lot of them and they're they're high on chakra. This one actually increases damage increase rate as well as increasing your own chakra for allies, but also decreases everyone's chakra by half almost. So this is fantastic for, for PvE purposes. And then, of course, it would be this one next in line if you're looking for something a little more tanky with a mix, mix of, of damage. So this one includes, increases damage increase rate and then damage reduction rate and boosts all status effects rates, suppression rate. Now, that's not as important in PvE, but it's still really good. So it would be um, Sasori Dedera, Itachi Kisame, and uh, uh, Hidan, and uh, Kakuzu. That would be the order. All right, guys, so if you're looking to enhance um, and take advantage of these, what you want to do is you want to collect those NWT coins and start putting in some effort into enhancing. There you go. So you have 105. I use mine for... Um, for uh, for gamma coins instead but if you click on that there you go see the percentages went up um and you just keep doing that till you level it now when you get to 10 you're going to need these stones 